this time on Power Drift, can a small non-M BMW equal to a fun BMW? And should you choose it over a practical, sensible, 100% BMW 3 Series? And before we go any further, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, so that we can send the best automotive content right to you. If I think of large, fast sedans, my mind tends to go straight to the Germans. And that's only because more often than not, they get it right. But what if you do want something large? What if you want something more affordable? Well, now the Germans, and in particular BMW, have an answer for that as well. It's called the 2 Series Grand Coupe and straight away you can tell that it's not the prettiest BMW. When BMW says Grand Coupe, it means slapping on an extra pair of doors, giving it the liberty of more space on the inside. That courtesy didn't seem to extend to the aesthetics though because the 2GC looks underwhelming in my eyes. Now granted, they've gone easy on the grille and that's because the car isn't sold in China, but it still doesn't fit. It feels a touch overdone from the front with all these lines and cuts and creases, but that's open to interpretation. The rear as well just feels like they were hurried. Of course, your feelings might differ, but I think it could have been done much more tastefully. Now, this would be a great time for you to tell us exactly what you think about the 2GC in the comments. And getting back to it, thankfully, the moment you get into the cabin, that's when everything starts to click. You begin to realize exactly why you spent all that money. Now, keep in mind that the 2GC is a fair chunk cheaper than the 3 Series. But the great part is, it just doesn't show. There's Apple CarPlay, the buttons and the vents are very premium. There's excellent bolstering. And my favorite, typical of every BMW, the driving position is spot on. At this point, you're probably wondering whether you can fit four people inside and a bit of luggage for the occasional long distance drive. And it's here that the 2GC's size really starts to show itself. Okay, and right on time, completely coincidentally, another um, extremely well-dressed, helmet-wearing six-footer has just shown up. What's up? How's it going? Nothing? Okay, nothing. And anyway, as you can see, uh, the stranger and I, we don't really fit near because the headroom is really quite bad. So that means every time you go over a bump, we're definitely going to be hitting our heads. At the same time, knee room seems adequate and uh, seat backs are comfortable. Anything to add? No? Okay. And also you're seated much higher compared to the front two seats, so you get a nice view out. Do you agree? Something? Okay, I guess he's just not that interested and probably would rather be doing his own motorcycle bits. So, you can go now. You can go. And, yeah, I'll see you later. Another thing I wanted to talk about was the boot space, which again doesn't get helped by the fact that this is, in effect, a slightly large coupe. With 430 liters, you can get a modest amount of luggage in. But at the end of the day, because of the narrow entrance, it's not going to do you many favors. All this, however, is a sidestep, a prelude to the question that needs answering. Is the 2GC fun to drive? I need to find this out. Now there's a 2-litre inline-4 diesel powering the 2 Series Grand Coupe and that makes a good 190 horsepower and 400 Nm, which is the same output for the diesel 3 Series. The only difference is that it's now in a car that's a lot lighter. And wow, does it make a lot of difference. No doubt, having a regular size grill shaves off a lot of weight, but I didn't think it would be this responsive. But here's the thing, before I get too excited, it's good to remind myself and you that this is no 3 Series around the corners. And that ultimately boils down to the fact that this is a front wheel drive car versus the 3 Series which is a rear wheel drive car. A front-wheel drive BMW is blasphemy according to certain people, but if done right, it can have an outstanding effect, which you'll see shortly. The engine too, it's mounted transversely instead of longitudinally. 
It's a big step away if you know your BMWs, but why it's done this is because it's a lot more affordable, easier to package and practical. The downside, in theory, is that you miss out on a front-to-drive car. In theory. But that's not the case here with the 2GC somehow. For a start, I have to admit that I was expecting a fair amount of understeer from the 2GC because, well, it's a trait that most, if not all, front-wheel drive cars have. But, spot a corner, push it hard, yet within reason. And there's very nearly none of it. I don't know how BMW has done this, but <laughs> I'm actually glad they have. Let me be very clear about this. I'm not one to say that rear-wheel drive cars don't make sense anymore, because of course they do. But at the end of the day, if all front-wheel drive cars can be made to behave and drive like this, I'm all for it. There will be people who will make you believe that BMWs running away from tradition and shying away from building driver's cars, all in the name of practicality and efficiency. And for a person who lives at the racetrack every weekend, <laughs> yes, the 2GC might not be ideal. But for you and me, for the people who don't push a car to the ragged edge every second that they're driving it, the 2GC is fine. It's better than fine, in fact. It feels alive, like it has character, like it's talking to you. There's not many cars that you can say that about nowadays. And more than that, it'll do everything else right too. The 8-speed gearbox, for instance, it's an absolute gem. So you don't have to worry about anything, even in traffic. And it'll be right there cheering you on when you have to make a quick overtake out on the highway. It rides beautifully too. It's got just the right amount of firmness to be stable at high speeds and just enough springiness to be comfortable when you're trundling along and running over potholes. And the bit that I'm most impressed with is this steering. There's some solid heft from it at low speeds, but without it feeling heavy. And it's reassuringly connected at higher speeds. What will be really fun and something I'm really looking forward to is seeing how this 2 Series Grand Coupe stacks up against the Mercedes-Benz A-Class limousine. That's supposed to launch sometime later this year or early next year. Would you like to see us compare those? Comment now. There is no such thing as a perfect car. Sadly enough, I've come to accept that truth. But the thing I've learned is that if you can find a machine that overcomes a shortcoming, like a fussy exterior, by just pulling you in completely by even one aspect, like the way it drives, and in the process, just making you forget about everything, <laughs> then all is forgiven. The 2GC is just that car. The real clincher is that it costs a good chunk less than a 3 Series. But there's no corresponding drop in what you get as a car. Sure, it's not the most spacious, but if you're a family of two, with the occasional third or fourth member thrown in, it's kind of hard to ignore the 2 Series Grand Coupe. And that's because you don't feel short-changed driving it. Great interiors, plenty of kit, it's beautiful to drive and while not everyone's going to love the way the GC looks, at the end of the day, it's still a car that does most things right. Now, more than ever, it's so tempting to buy into the BMW family. And speaking of tempting, I'm going to go for one last spin. Oh, by the way, thank you for watching Power Drift. We hope you enjoyed watching this as much as we enjoyed making it. And if you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe. It'll mean the world to us. Catch you on the next one.